The hearing will come to order. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. We will, uh, we will do opening statements and then go to your testimony with all of you who have been promptly here. The Oversight Committee's mission, we exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that the money Washington takes from them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to, is to protect these rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers, because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with citizen watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. Today's hearing centers around the Federal Government's current holding of over 10,000 excess properties and the way we spend hundreds of millions of dollars annually just to maintain these facilities, many of them in poor condition. Congressional Research Service says by any measure, the Federal Government has approximately 14,000 too many buildings and structures and approximately 76,000 properties that the Office of Management and Budget say are underutilized. Our committee, with jurisdiction over the disposal of these assets, takes seriously our responsibility. Additionally, we will take seriously the record of property disposal, both under BRAC for the military and civilian disposal, which has had an abysmal failure to recoup any significant dollars. It is regrettable that we now have an administration that spends over $1 billion per year to operate properties that are empty or unnecessary. It is more of interest to this committee that CBO's interpretation of the amount of money that is presently scored in the billions by this administration, as though it will happen, turns out to be anywhere from the millions or possibly, and I repeat, possibly could actually score an additional loss to the Treasury in its disposal. Making sure the American people continue to uh, pay only for what we use or pay for only for what we use and stop paying for unused space is bipartisan. Republicans and Democrats on this dais are united in trying to dispose of property. Today our witnesses are both Republicans and Democrats, each with, uh, with good ideas of how we can do better next time. Our committee is dedicated to hear all ideas and to recognize that if we keep doing what we have done in the past, we will simply have the same abysmal results, which is no net savings to the Treasury, no net elimination, and in many cases, assets which are high, more valuable being sold to the highest bidder being let to users of convenience who ultimately would be better off receiving the money than receiving the housing. This and other areas need to be look, looked at as in our uh, uh, jurisdiction. Mr. Chaffetz, who chairs our National Security Subcommittee, has proposed a program that would incentivize agencies to use space efficiently and dispose of what is unneeded by letting agencies retain 20 percent of net proceeds of their sale, while the Treasury would receive 80 percent for debt reduction. Mr. Quigley, the ranking member on the Financial Services Subcommittee, has proposed allowing the GSA to more efficiently coordinate the sale of Federal properties and to establish a greater level of transparency for data, uh, for, for data on Federal real property holdings. Additionally, Mr. Denham, uh, has taken his learning uh, and experience in the State of California and has proposed a commission to identify and submit uh, disposal recommendations to OMB that would be subject to con congressional approval. I look forward to all of these ideas and more. It is clear that business as usual must be behind us, not in front of us. With that, I recognize the ranking member for his opening statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I thank you for uh calling this hearing. The efficient management of government real property 
has long been of interest to this committee, the Government Accountability Office, and the Administration. While those, some improvements have been made over the last decade, much more remains to be done. The Federal Government has a vast real property portfolio of more than 900,000 buildings and structures with a combined area of over 3 billion square feet. The Administration recently estimated that 14,000 of these facilities were excess and 76,000 were underutilized, costing American taxpayers up to $1.7 billion in maintenance costs every year. Some have estimated that the sale of excess Federal properties might generate significant revenue, as much as uh, $15 billion. Personally, I am somewhat skeptical of these estimates. Uh, <clears throat> they rely on property values estimated using replacement value or the cost to build another similar structure, rather than the more reliable appraisal method using fair market value. Nevertheless, improvements in Federal real property management are clearly needed. In 2004, the previous administration, led by the General Services Administration and the Office of Management and Budget, created the Federal Real Property Council, which made significant progress in creating an accurate inventory of the government's property holdings. The current administration has continued this effort. In June 2010, the President issued a memorandum directing OMB and Federal agencies to seek cost savings of $3 billion by the end of fiscal year 2012 by increasing sales and reducing operating and maintenance costs for surplus properties. Earlier this year, the Administration proposed legislation to create a commission to speed the disposal of unneeded, underutilized Federal property, similar to the BRAC process used for military facilities. Today, we are honored to have three distinguished members of the House testifying on the first panel about bills they have introduced to improve the management of unneeded and underutilized Federal properties. Representative Quigley's uh, legislation would make improvements to help speed disposals, require greater transparency in the reporting on Federal property, allow agencies to retain the proceeds of property sales, and give GSA the authority to pay certain disposal costs on a reimbursable basis. Mr. <coughs> Denham's uh, bill closely resembles the pro proposal put forth by the Administration. And I understand he worked on these issues at the State level before coming to uh, Congress. Finally, Mr. Chaffetz's legislation uh, would create a pilot program run by OMB to require that selected properties be sold for cash. Under this bill, OMB would be directed to find $19 billion in sales proceeds of over the life of the pilot program. Uh, I look forward to hearing from all of our colleagues as well as the witnesses on the second panel. Finally, as we consider these various proposals, I hope we pay careful attention to the current rules allowing nonprofits and local and State governmental entities to obtain surplus Federal property at a discount. These narrowly constrained rules allow for such conveyances for the public's benefit, and although they represent only a small percentage of disposals, they are important to the entities that receive them and to the public. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back and look forward to hearing from our witnesses. I thank the Ranking Member. All members will have seven days to uh, submit their opening statements and extraneous material for the record. With that, now, we now go to our first panel of, of witnesses. The Honorable Mike Quigley, a member of the committee, represents the Fifth District of the State of Illinois. The Honorable Jason Chaffetz represents the 3rd District of the State of Utah. Since you are both members of the committee, you know we don't swear members of the committee. <laughs> so with that, Mr. Quigley, I would uh, love to have your opening statement, uh, which, by the way, is the only way you can guarantee an opening statement over and above the chairman and ranking member. I think it was very clever for both of you to get your opening statements. The gentleman is recognized. You, you caught us. I want to thank the Chairman and the Ranking Member for holding this hearing and the, the panel for joining me in this uh, work on this vital issue. Uh, as you have suggested, the Federal Government is the largest property owner in the world with an inventory over 
900,000 buildings and structures and 41 million acres of land. Yet we waste billions of dollars each year maintaining properties we no longer need. The Federal Government currently maintains 14,000 buildings and structures deemed excess and over 76,000 properties identified as underutilized. In fiscal year 2009, these underutilized buildings cost us $1.7 billion to operate, and we spend hundreds of millions more on buildings we simply don't need. The GAO has continuously found that many properties are no longer relevant to their agency's missions and that agencies could do a better job of identifying and disposing of unneeded properties. So why are we paying billions to sit on thousands of unneeded properties? To address these problems, I have introduced H.R. 1205, the Federal Real Properties Disposal Enhancement Act. The bill addresses three major hurdles to disposing of thousands of unneeded Federal properties and generated much-needed revenue. First, administrative burdens. Agencies are often deterred from disposing of unneeded property due to a variety of screening process which take up to two years and cost millions in maintenance during the process. My bill establishes a pilot program that would exempt certain properties unlikely to be used as homeless shelters under McKinley-Vento from a requirement to screen properties for homeless use before disposal. Second, budgetary disincentives. Currently, agencies avoid disposing of excess property because of high upfront cost of disposal. Paying for, environment, paying for environmental cleanup can cost millions. My bill would allow all agencies to retain the proceeds from the disposition of the property and use those funds, as authorized by Congress, to maintain, repair, and dispose of other excess properties. Any funds not used to prepare and dispose of property will be paid back to the Treasury for debt reduction. The third and final obstacle is the lack of transparency and oversight of Federal property. All Federal property information is currently maintained in an extensive database managed by GSA, but this information is not available to the public, Federal workers, or most Congressional staff. Our bill would require GSA to submit an annual report to Congress that includes information on the number, value, and maintenance cost of all Federal properties. This information would also be made available to the public at no cost in an online database. The transparency, in my bill, the transparency in my bill will provide is absolutely imperative because, as things stand today, we are flying blind. Let me give you just one example. When I learned about all these valuable excess properties, my staff decided to go take a look at a few of them in my home state of Illinois. After spending eight months going back and forth with various agencies to get the information, we visited a property that was reportedly worth over $8 million and cost more than $80,000 per year to maintain. The USDA database said the property was in excellent condition, but the reality was quite different. The $8 million storage facility was in shambles, complete with peeling paint and deteriorated siding, the exterior overtaken by vegetation and the interior looted by vandals. And so it was with scores of other buildings on the site what the USDA spreadsheet represented as in excellent shape and receiving thousands annually in maintenance was, in fact, a dilapidated mess. As my staff learned when we toured the site, no money had been spent on maintaining these structures since the mid-1990s. The USDA explained that a formula was used to arrive at the estimates for annual maintenance costs and replacement value, but that the numbers had no relation to reality. Clearly, there is a serious disconnect between what is on our books and the reality on the ground. We can't possibly know what our assets are worth or make a plan to capitalize them on them without accurate data. Without better, more transparent data, we are flying blind. I thank the Chair, the chair and my colleagues again for their work on this issue. I look forward to continuing to bring transparency to our Federal properties, selling what we don't need, and generating revenue when we need it most. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chaffetz. Thanks. Uh, thank you to Chairman Issa, Ranking Member Cummings, uh, for addressing this important topic and other members uh, of the committee. I appreciate being here and allowing me to testify on behalf of my bill, H.R. 665, the Excess Federal Building and Property Disposal Act of 2011. Today's topic is important. I look forward to working with the committee to find solutions to excess property disposal issues facing our country. The Federal Government is the largest single holder of real property in the United States. Federal government owns more than 900,000 buildings and structures, 
Republican and Democratic administrations and various government entities have identified many of these properties as excess and underutilized. Yet tens of thousands of unneeded properties remain in the Federal Government's possession today. This is not acceptable. Congress must work to streamline the Federal Government's real property management strategy. President Bush and President Obama both identified excess properties and structures that, if sold, could generate billions in revenue and savings. The Fiscal Commission said, quote, Federal agencies operate and maintain more real property assets than necessary, often raising costs to the taxpayer, end quote. The Government Accountability Office, or GAO, estimated that the Federal Government holds underutilized properties that cost nearly $1.7 billion annually to operate. More recently, the Office of Management and Budget Comptroller uh, Daniel Werfel testified that the Government controls 14,000 excess buildings and 76,000 underutilized properties. Clearly, the Federal Government's disposal track record is subpar. In fact, since 2003 and more recently in 2011, the GAO designated Federal real property management as high-risk area of the Federal Government. The status quo is no longer an option. The fiscal challenges facing this country are deep and severe. Effective Federal property management requires unique opportunities for the Federal Government to right-size its real estate portfolio, reduce costs, and achieve savings through public sale of unneeded properties. The current disposal process is flawed for two reasons. First, agencies lack the necessary incentives to initiate the disposal process. Second, a myriad of requirements throughout the process prevent properties from, from even being offered for sale. Under current law, the disposal process begins when a Federal agency reports an excess property to the General Service Administration, the GSA. Agencies lack the know-how, funds, and incentives to simply, to simply report these excess properties to GSA. For most agencies, doing nothing is more economical than engaging in the disposal process. The next step is the disposal process is laden with obstacles and limitations. Current law and regulations handcuff GSA's disposal abilities. Excess properties first must be offered to other Federal agencies. In the absence of other Federal needs, surplus properties must then be made available for other uses, which includes homeless shelters, parks and recreation facilities, and State and local government use. Once those requirements have been exhausted, buildings are finally then offered to the public for sale. Taxpayers lose under this current disposal process. A variety of alternative use and conveyance requirements prevent properties from being sold at fair market value. According to GAO, these requirements denote that, quote, GSA's underutilized or excess properties may remain in the agency's possession for years and continue to accumulate maintenance and operations costs, end quote. My bill would establish a pilot program designed to, ex designed to expedite the selling of unneeded Federal property. The pilot program would be managed by the Director of OMB, which is in line with the 2007 GAO report in which GAO recommended that OMB assistant assist agencies in the disposal process. The bill establishes an aggressive disposal goal that would require OMB and others to effectively and efficiently identify and dispose unneeded properties. The bill provides Federal property managers with tools designed to maximize disposals and taxpayer returns. The first tool provides agencies with incentives to engage in the disposal process. By directing 20 percent of the proceeds to agencies, agencies are empowered to quickly identify and report excess properties. The other 80 percent would be used for debt reduction, something this country desperately needs. Second, properties considered under the pilot program are not subject to the onerous disposal provisions described earlier. Once a property is identified for disposal, the property would be immediately eligible for public sale. Property disposed under the pilot program is exempt from normal transfer requirements, public use conveyance requirements, and other no-cost conveyance provisions. Finally, by empowering OMB, GSA, and other Federal agencies with tools to provide excess Federal Building and Property Disposal Act, the Federal Government can finally rid itself of dead weight and demonstrate to the American public that Congress is serious about streamlining government and becoming more fiscally responsible. I thank the Committee for uh, allowing me this opportunity on this important subject. And I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chaffetz. Mr. Denham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate you holding this hearing today. I commend the, the gentleman uh, at, from this committee and uh, my fellow colleagues on, on this panel for working toward real property reform. And may I introduce H.R. 1734, the Civilian Property Realignment Act, to establish a civilian BRAC like commission to help shed waste in the, in the management of Federal buildings and properties. 
I have been pleased to work closely with the administration in this effort as they similarly released a proposal along with a list of 14,000 properties already in the disposal process. By OMB's estimates, our, our proposals could save the taxpayer more than $15 billion. I actually believe that number is much, much higher. I believe our efforts uh, may truly produce a bipartisan solution to significantly alter the manner in which Federal property is managed. As a member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, I am fortunate enough to chair the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings and Emergency Management. This subcommittee has jurisdiction over Federal buildings and improved grounds generally, and we uh, have made significant progress in bringing this issue to the public by holding several public hearings and a subcommittee markup on my legislation. I first proposed a civilian BRAC commission at our subcommittee's first hearing in February, and the President proposed a commission in his 2012 budget. It was clear then, as it is now, that just having a fire sale of surplus property in a bad real estate market is not going to generate significant savings for the taxpayer. Instead, redeveloping, consolidating, or selling certain high-value assets can unleash huge cost savings for taxpayers. For example, it makes sense for a few hundred Federal it makes less, little sense for a few hundred Federal workers to be sitting in an underutilized asset that could generate hundreds of millions of dollars if redeveloped or sold. As I have often stated and continue to maintain, to achieve significant savings, any solution must incorporate these key principles. First, it must consolidate the footprint of Federal real estate, it must house more Federal employees and less overall space, it must reduce our reliance on lease space for long-term requirements. It must sell or redevelop high-value assets that are underutilized or too valuable for housing Federal employees, and we must uh, dispose of surplus property much, much quicker. Uh, disposal is part of the process, and streamlining that process is important. CBO mentioned in its letter to this committee about previous failures in the disposal process. We have seen high-value property like Governor's Island in New York and the Presidio in San Francisco fall by the wayside. Uh, when significant taxpayer savings could have been realized. The Commission will be tasked with creating value out of excess and surplus properties so the taxpayer isn't continually shortchanged. However, to truly reform our asset portfolio in a way that generates significant and lasting savings to the public, we must ensure the government also takes steps to realign and consolidate its footprint. And we must ensure agencies are sitting on valuable assets that would give the taxpayers a greater return if sold or redeveloped. We have an opportunity to achieve comprehensive reform, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to that end. I doubt most government agencies would recognize a good real estate opportunity if it stared them in the face. It is important that we get this right. After receiving input from experts and key stakeholders, one thing became abundantly clear. The Commission will need to leverage the expertise and market knowledge of the private sector on behalf of the taxpayer for to achieve real savings. I believe this is an important point, and I look forward to hearing the testimony of the second panel to see if they agree that Congress must leverage the private sector expertise. We also must ensure that this process incorporates the right incentives and tools to maximize the return to taxpayers and require that agencies not conduct business as usual. That is why a process that includes an independent commission similar to BRAC is needed. Real savings will require a commission to look across government and identify ways to unlock the value in our, in our properties without turf battles and red tape stalling the process. I believe the potential to save billions of, of dollars is real, and our challenge is to create a system where it will happen. Again, I thank the Chairman for holding this hearing today and inviting me to testify. I hope that our two committees can work together toward a solution that delivers real savings to the American taxpayer. Thank you. I want to thank all of our witnesses. It is not a normal policy to ask questions of members, but would you take a, a short series if, if people have specific questions? Uh, also, Mr. Denham, you are invited to sit on the dais if you would like to for the second panel. Uh, our rules allow for you to sit. You will be recognized last, but as you see, that won't be all that late. Uh, if, if I could ask you just two short questions. All of your bills deal in some small way with uh, the homeless. Each of them seems to reduce the ultimate benefit to the homeless. Hopefully, each of you, as you are looking at your bills and, and bringing them before the committee, will recognize that it is unlikely that any bill will leave this committee if there is not an equivalent benefit to homeless in each of your bills. 
if, you, if any of you would like to comment on, on whether you think you have already achieved that or whether you can make amendments to ensure that the ultimate benefit that has historically occurred, which is about 2 percent of liquidations, would be retained in your bills? Well, I, I think it is a fair question. Um, my bill establishes a program that would exempt certain properties that are very unlikely to be used for the homeless to go through that screening process. Uh, but we are open to any amendments and suggestions as to make sure that um, we cover all the bases and protect those. Mr. Chaffetz. I would say the, the very similar thing. Uh, this uh, identifies, it, this takes the 14,000 properties that have previously been identified. I would hope that if the homeless uh, program, that, that would be accelerated under that, uh, that those properties would be identified and accelerated. Uh, but I am open to suggestions from members on either side of the aisle about how we can uh, uh, make sure that we are helping uh, in that regard. Mr. Denham. Uh, this is not something we have been negotiating with uh, the administration on, but certainly uh, we would be open to looking at amendments. The goal of this is to save taxpayer dollars. Uh, we want to get rid of as much red tape as possible so that we can actually sell these properties. I mean, I think CBO has a great point. Do you really have evidence that you are going to sell properties or not? And if the more red tape that we have out there, the more things that we hold up, uh, the reasoning for selling these properties, the less savings we are going to see for taxpayers. So, you know, again, our, our goal is to consolidate, uh, to make sure we are getting uh, the, the right use for the taxpayers on this, and to sell off as much as possible during a, a, uh, a huge debt crisis. Well, I appreciate that. And I won't phrase the next one as a question, but from the standpoint of the committee staff, we are also concerned that we are going to have to add to one or all of your bills as we go through the process some equally more efficient way to ensure that if property has real value to another sector of government, that there be an efficient way to do it. And I know each of you is trying to deal with the, the legacy of the BRAC process, where the FBI takes one building and NSA takes another, and pretty soon you have a hodgepodge of things that can't be sold. But there is, in fact, a legitimate concern from within government that we have an efficient way for a willing buyer, willing seller, if they happen to both be government, to, uh, to do it efficiently. And uh, as you look at your legislation, that is something you may want to uh, uh, so, sort of add as something that the committee can see. Yes, and, Mr. Denham. And we actually have that addressed uh, by consolidating the leasing authority. What we saw with the SEC uh, was uh, beyond a mistake. Uh, what they did was illegal. Um, we have got to make sure that not only do they give up their leasing authority, but that we uh, consolidate our leasing authority uh, between all agencies, have it go under one uh, agency, and uh, be able to hold that agency accountable. So that if there are other government uses, if you have two agencies that can occupy the same building, then we are doing that. But we are making the best decisions based on uh, one agency that can oversee all of that. And I, I don't believe there should be any pride of ownership here. If there is more than one bill here, uh, we should all work together toward putting together the final best product to serve the use here. Uh, toward that end, though, I do think the element in my legislation of uh, putting everything online will help. Uh, I, I think other governments and people outside government don't even know what is available. So that centerpiece of information helps us from flying blind and moves forward more appropriately. I would just add that we are relying upon the uh, executive branch that has already identified 14,000 properties as excess, that they have gone through a lot of these gyrations and assessments along the way, and these are truly excess properties. Thank you. And, Mr. Cummings, you had something short also. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for raising the question with regard to homelessness. Um, it is a tremendous problem in our country. Uh, just yesterday, the Pew Trust uh, re, uh, released a report that uh, showed that um, between 2005 and 2009, uh, Americans took a real hit with regard to uh, their uh, wealth. As a matter of fact, Hispanics' uh, wealth decreased by some 60-some percent, I think it was 66, 66 percent. African Americans uh, more than 50 percent, and others substantial. A lot of people are own, uh, ending up who never thought that they would be in a homeless shelter or walking the streets without a home. They are there today. And um, so, Mr. Chairman, we had gotten a letter from uh, 
uh, the homeless advocates, and uh, dated July 26, 2011, is addressed to you, uh, and I would ask, and me, and I would ask that it be admitted into the record. Without objection, and we will work on a joint response. Thank you very much. Just one, one thing I just want to read from this so that our guests will be uh, aware. In this letter, it says, in their current forms, property disposal bills H.R. 665 and H.R. 1734 pose serious concerns for homeless service providers. For example, unlike the base realignment and closure process, the bills do not require the Civilian Property of Realignment Board to involve homeless service providers in the decision-making process. They also contain certain uh, timelines that are too short for homeless service providers to identify appropriate properties. Additionally, a majority of the board members are required to consider a property for homeless service use. This requirement is unduly burdensome and would significantly reduce the likelihood that homeless service providers' needs would be considered. Um, and I hope that uh, you all will take that into consideration. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. We will take a short recess to set up for our second panel.